Yesterday I experienced losing my closest brother to suicide. And yeah, that makes two of my brothers that I've lost to suicide in less than a year. And so the following is me sharing what God has put on my heart in May of 2021. I hope that this will reach some of you that have this calling on your heart too. And I pray that together we can put an end to suffering and suicide and overdose. Let's stand together and reignite divine light upon the planet. For now is the time for us to rise together as one. When I got home from Egypt, back to Montana in May of 2021, God showed me all of these people and they were standing on the edge of a cliff and they were about to jump off. And he showed me these three-day festivals called Reignite Divine Light. And they were for inspiring and motivating people, like reigniting their divine spark within them and letting the world know that help has arrived, that it's time to come out, that it's it's time to, you know, bring in this, this new age of um, co-creation with God. And, you know, like so much can come when we sit in a place of of just being in, we can use that for our motivation to like see what's not working and, and bring something forward through us. And he was showing me that all of these people put suicide or overdose on their path as like a choice, but not an absolute. Like if they couldn't fulfill their mission, then this would come and it would, it, it would create a ripple within the family that would wake up the family. And he showed me that like the first night was all about, you know, the speakers and I I saw conscious musicians, the speakers and vendors, you know, like kind of like you do a a metaphysical fair where people have like booths on the outside. But then there was like a room where there was the speakers and we were just the first night was all about the people that were working there. And we um, gave them the frequency of this is about us bringing the frequency or the consciousness of God to people so that they can have their own experience with God. Not about preaching, it's about a frequency, it's about a feeling of God and an experience with God. And and so the first night was really allowing for all of the people that were co-creating this with us to be in one space to gather together, to have like a dance party and to give them the um, the frequency of like what the intention, the shared intention so that we can be in this unified field of consciousness and to not get distracted about how much money you're making and, you know, how much you're selling or whatever. It's like remembering that every single person that's walking through the door is lost and, and we all know what that feels like and to um, be that, that messenger from God in those moments. The first night was all about us getting on like the same wavelength and um, really like harmonizing. And then the next two days was all about the people wherever we went and going to these places on the planet that are being really, you know, hit by the spirit of suicide and addiction. And, um, And that like he just put it on me that this was my role and... Um, it was time because people were going to start to jump off the edge of the cliff. And I was like, yeah, okay. But like, I'm, I'm moving from Montana to Arizona, like right now. Like, I don't, I have no resources to like make that happen. Like I have no idea how to put on a festival. And, and then the next day my roommate's sister hung herself and I was like, okay, okay. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'll be obedient. I'll figure it out. And I did it. I came to Sedona and I started to make calls to like hotels. And I thought, you know, this is, this is a message that's coming through from God. He's put it on other people's hearts. So like people are going to come together to co-create this with me. 
And so like I went to the Hilton and I asked them if they would just like sponsor it. I couldn't get anybody to contact me back and I didn't keep pursuing it because I don't have enough faith in myself that I can do it. That it just feels too big. It feels so much bigger than me. And then my best friend's mother hung herself. And it's literally been so many people like I can't even, like I can't even. <sighs> And so um, then last year, I went home for Thanksgiving and I had a conversation with my little brother. I was going to see him the next day for Thanksgiving. Like, out of all seven of us, he is the baby. And, um, and then he shot himself in the face. And uh, my brother, Andre, we were the closest in age. <sighs> And it's like, God's like, maybe if I just keep picking her family off, maybe she'll be obedient to me and follow through with my will. But I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't even know how to pay my own bills. Like, I'm not, I don't feel like I don't. <laughs> I know, I know, like, how to do the actual thing like I know what to say when I get on stage I know how to like keep everybody in that frequency of God when we're doing the thing but I don't know how to create the whole thing like and and it, I just feel like ah uh, I feel like I just can't lose another person that I love because I wasn't obedient to God. <laughs> so if what I've shared is speaking to your heart and you want to get involved and let's co-create this wave, this movement of reigniting the divine spark within each and every one of us, then I invite you to send me an email at Kendra Divine Mother Ministry at gmail.com. I look forward to talking with you.